Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a database in Massploit. So when would you do this? You would do this when you start having um, more than a couple of hosts to be scanning, You've, or you have a lot of services that you need to go through. Um, it's just an easier way of having data and having it, it to be easy access and parsed rather than having it in different um, text documents and things like that. It just makes it easier to, it also makes it easier to read and also easier to show other people. So, first thing we need to do is we need to connect to Postgres as oops, as a super user. And then we need to create a user. And we're going to give it dash uppercase P to say we want to put a password with it. We're going to do username is sketchy moose. Our password is going to be super secure. Um, it's going to be password. Enter it again. And yes, I want to be a super user. So, okay, we have a new user now called Sketchy Moose. And the next thing we need to do now is create a database. So create database and uppercase for the owner, and the owner is going to be Sketchy Moose. And what is the name of the database? Well, since we're doing we're on a roll right now with the password, we're going to call it database database. Oh, spelled it wrong. I've been doing that lately. I got a new keyboard, um, so everything's a little bit wonky right now. So okay, we have a new database. So now the only thing we have left to do is to connect to it. And if you see here, uh, there's two different uh, databases you could use, PostgreSQL or MySQL. And the active one by default is Postgres. So that's just the one I decided to use. So what you do now is connect. Oh, and I should say, if you run help, you see a list of all the potential commands you can issue for the database backend right here. You see, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So now we can do db connect, and then the username, which is sketchy moose, our password, super secure password, and then at localhost or wherever the database is, you have it set up, and make sure you can connect to it. And then now we need is the name of the database. And if everything works, you will see a bunch of output from Metasploit saying it's creating some tables and it's creating columns within those tables. So you can check to see if it works. You can do DB or hosts, and that'll show you um, just one of the tables in the database called database. And this table is called hosts, and you can see there's different columns here. And if you only wanted to see um, like let's say you only wanted to see Mac name and OS flavor. You could do that as well with the dash C command which is for column. Oops. Man, sorry. There we go. So but you know obviously the columns are still there, it's just that you're only calling certain ones and the dash C is for the column. So now what can you do with it? Well um, Metasploit actually has nmap built in, so you can run db nmap, and I should have a couple of hosts running. I'm not sure exactly what I have up, so I'm just going to do a quick look. And so we're going to do a service scan and get all the versions, do a banner grab basically of all the ver uh, services that we see running. I'm um, doing so async printing. We'll do 192, 168, jeez, 0.9 uh, through 15. Yeah, that looks correct. I'm going to let that run. And I'm going to pause it here. Okay, so we have some NMAP output here for us. And you can only see here that we have only one host up right now. And that's an OS Windows box. So, But now you might be saying, well, now wait a minute. I already have a bunch of NMAP scans. Now what can you do with those? Do I have to run NMAP all over again? Well, thanks to the joy of Metasport, you don't actually have to. There is a command called db import, and you can actually import your nmap scans that you've already done. And I believe this is in XML format, so you have to do um, dash little o uppercase x, or if you do, um, I think it's lowercase o uppercase a, it'll put a, I'll put it into all formats that you could possibly use. So better to be safe than sorry. You never know where you're going to use it. So you see here it added uh, dot 10 and dot 15. 
So it found 9 before, and now it has 2 more, 10 and 15. So now if you look at our DB hosts, we'll see here that it has a bunch more information. We can go to services, and it also has some good information. It has version numbers, and um, you know, so this is probably a Windows box, just saying. And we, it looks like we have a Linux box here. We could tell that if we looked at the host file. But taking a, you know, a guess. So now, there's a bunch of other things we can actually import in the database. And one of them is actually Nessus stuff. And so Nessus is a vulnerability scanner. It goes out and it looks at the services that are running and it does some, some, um, some simple tests to see if the vulnerabilities uh, that it can find in on this host that you're scanning. So now it says here uh, DB underscore import Nessus, but if you actually did that, it'll tell you that's being appreciated and just use DB import. So that's what we're gonna do. Import. Um, it's just. Oh, you have to put it to where it is. It's helpful. Here we go. So now it's importing some more information. Now where this, where Nessus shines is under the uh, table of vulnerabilities. Here's a, a bunch of information here. Kind of hard to read though, isn't it? So what can you do with this information? Well, one of the things you can do that Metasploit does for you, you can DB, um, you can export this and you can just say where you want it, home, maybe. Uh, Metasploit. And I'll export this whole thing into an XML um, an XML document for you. So now if you went to CD Home and G Edit Metasploit, you can also open it up in a browser. This is all the information that you have in your databases um, in a slightly nicer looking format, right? So this is still actually I, I felt just a little bit harder to hard to parse. So um, there is a tool there called um, Dradis or Dradis. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. D R A D I S, and it's a, a a GUI interface to your database, and you can import uh, Nessus files. You can import some web vulnerability scanner. Um, files into there, but I never seemed to get it to work 100%. I would get NMAP to load, then I could get Nessus to load, and I couldn't figure out the Metasploit plugin either. I was trying a bunch of different things, it just wasn't working. So I didn't want to spend too much time on it, so I said, tech with it, I will just script it, because that's what you do, you script. So I actually had it going to the database itself and doing a pull for us, so let me see. Oh, I think it's under, there it is, .sh. So now if you if you don't care about this, um, you guys can actually turn off now. The, the creating the database part is done. I'm just showing you how you can pull information from the days and kind of make it into a, a more easier thing to look at. So you can, this is the, the script that I created and all you all it's doing is saying it says, okay, now give me the port that database is listening on and the default for Postgres is 5432 the host, which in our case would be 127.0.0.1, local host, username, CMOOS, and the database name, database. So, and right now I only have it grabbing, I uh, believe, host services, vulnerabilities, and notes. So this is more of like, you are still doing the enumeration and footprinting, um, fingerprinting <laughs> phases, and this isn't really for the post because there's a bunch of other tables that while you're exploiting, Metasploit will automatically um, update for you when you're in the Metasploit framework. So that would be good to include those when you are actually in the post phase. You know, you want to see how many creds did you find, and it'll have that in the database for you. And how many boxes of the ones that you were scanning were you actually able to exploit it has that as well. So it's a bunch of different tables. I suggest you just do the help and take a look at the look see and see what you can get. But let's do a let's run this file. So 5432, and my host is 127.0.0.1. Name, Sketchy Moose. There's a little bit of error checking you see here. Um, if you don't get enough command line arguments, it will put out this usage screen. But it's not, uh, it's not very pretty yet. So I, this is a quick solution to this. So, 
Oh, you have to put in the password as well. Okay, so the script's done. Check your home directory. Awesome. Home. And if I do a quick ls, I see my host table, um, my nest table, my service table, and my vulnerabilities table. So let me just quickly open that up. In G in G edit. So as you can see here, it's it's a lot it's just, it's just a lot easier to look at than in the XML thing. So yeah, granted, now this is all broken up, but it's still a little bit easier on the eyes to look at. So, and once again, I, I think this is be, this looks a lot nicer when you actually put this into a um, like a like an Excel spreadsheet program such as Microsoft Word or we can do that right now. So let's quickly. Um, let's just hold, let's grab um, services and let's just copy this and oh we already had it open so hold on let me just grab this here services so you can see here this is what it looks like in an Excel spreadsheet program so now if we just text columns and we use the limiter to be the that and we do finish and look at that it's it just looks a lot nicer um, and then you could just have multiple things on one worksheet and you know, obviously, I think this wouldn't be a great solution if you have like hundreds and hundreds, because like I said, it's just harder to keep them all in line. It would be better in the XML. But you know, this is this is something that I was looking for for just a few hosts. And so, if you filter that, so now let's say I only want to see things that are on port 80. Bring me that. Okay, so we have um, host one and two, and if we go to our host do the exact same thing there. I'm sorry. Should have had this all ready for you guys. That's what you get when you go a little bit farther than what you anticipated. And you look at that. So you have host 1 and 2 which is 10 and 15. So now what you could do probably what you could do so what you don't. So you could say every time you could just select this and every time you see every time you see uh, so let's say, what did we say that was? 1 is dot 10, so we say this 1 with 192.168.0.10. We do replace. Oh, why doesn't that work? Okay, well that one worked. Okay. So, um, so you could do the same thing with two. So it really won't won't work that well as you just see what would just happen. So, but there's there's definitely ways to to fix it, and I'm not going to say that it's not possible. But I just feel that this works quite well. So. Um, that's it. That's all I have. If anybody wants to play with this script, um, you are more than welcome to um, email me and I can send it to you. And if you can figure out a way of making the thing that's going to be would be the worst is the vulnerabilities because if you look here, the way that Nessus does the output, it uses these colons as well and it just makes everything a bit of a mess, which is a shame because it, it, um, it would be quite handy to see. But, um, yeah, so if anybody has any questions or anything like that, feel free to shoot me an email or anything like that. Let me just do a quick VI of Volms, because it, no, one of them, it actually looked pretty okay. I can't remember which one. If there's any questions, just let me know, and until then, I will talk to you guys later. Tschüss!